find new form, break form. Uh, I want to um, understand the difference of having boundaries and frames versus none whatsoever. And that's always been something I've been curious about. Um, even in the few things that I had opportunities to work on, it was always about, again, trying to evolve a camera. So when the Steadicam was invented, it was about basically trying to break free from, from rigid, you know, fixed, um, you know, moving devices and or sticks. And so if you look at a camera, uh, cameras have evolved quite a bit. By the time I got to the first Matrix, which was a long time ago at this point, I had stumbled upon a technique that actually had been invented over a hundred years before uh, by Edward Muybridge. And uh, even before Thomas Edison, who more or less stole the idea of how to create sequential images into temporal film, um, the Moorbridge already had the formula for uh, acquisition of the world in a way, right? He, he was filming things from multiple angles at once, and uh, this technique apparently is actually part of the secret uh, that even today is being uh, discovered that we can actually create volumetric media in a similar fashion, plus with the aid of computers to interpret, you know, these things. Anyhow, um, what was interesting is that cameras were stuck on sticks, they went onto cranes, you know, they moved, right? Kubrick puts it on a steady cam so it feels like it's a person, it's free-floating. And then from there, computers allowed cameras to become virtual, right? So once you've become virtual, then you've achieved something that um, David Hockney likes to refer to as a god's eye, right? That, uh, you know, to enslave a, a person, a viewer, a person's view to a fixed point, it is a, it's a form of slavery, right? So that what you're doing right now, Hockney, Hockney would, you know, berate you. <laughs> for that, right? For enslaving him to that view right there. Uh, but I don't think Hockney quite realized that what he was professing at the time, right, was to to look at things from all perspectives, from wider perspectives, as he, his last show was about. So, you know, I feel like something about the pursuit of a God's eye, right, is partly behind uh, what has excited me uh, in the ways um, I've uh, worked with others to try to uh, create moments that you can experience in a different way. And it's still part of what I'm after. You know, so there's a lot of people who are working on virtual reality, mixed reality, immersive media of all sorts. Um, and they're exploring as I am I. Uh, but it's that inevitable arrival at the limitlessness of having a God's eye that will you know, take us into some, you know, next level human uh, place, right? We'll be a bit superhuman when we're able to do that uh, with zero friction. Uh, so we'll see. And, uh, you know, what you put before uh, the God's eye, you know, is a matter of your personal, <laughs> right, creative instincts uh, and all of our, everyone's. I don't even remember what you asked me originally.